Hi, I'm Desmond from McKean, and today I'm going to be modeling a couch inside Blender 2.74. Now, if you're new to uh, Blender, I recommend that you go to File, and then User Preferences. There'll be a few things in here you'll need to change. First off, you'll need to change uh, the selection, because by default, Blender is, selected, is set to this, which is select with your right mouse button. You will need to select left mouse button, that way, so it's like traditional Windows uh, controls. Next is the orbit style. Change from turntable to trackball. That way, so you can orbit all um, pitch, roll, and yaw rotation. And let's see here. There's a few more things there. Uh, next, there's a few add ons I recommend that you use. If I scroll down this list here, I've already enabled them, but I'll scroll down so you can see. First, enable extra objects right here. I may or may not use this for this tutorial. Not tutorial, this workflow video. I'll explain that in a minute. But um, enable this one. You may use this one. Enable extra. No, never mind. Scratch that. You don't really. You could check it out, but I'm not going to use it in this video. Uh, let's see, going on down here, I'm looking for loop cut tools. That's the main ones you'll be using for this video, or I'll be using. So here, uh, starting here, uh, enable mesh F2. Enable inset polygon. Enable loop tools, which is going to be the main one I'll be using for this tutorial, the workflow video, and it will mesh relax tools. And going on here, I have that enabled, but you don't need that. I'm not going to use Rigify or use Rigify anymore. And I'm actually enabling the Pi menu. That way, so you can see which mode I'm in, whether it be object mode, weight paint mode, or whatever the case may be. So there's all that for add-ons. After that, head on over to, not that, head on over to system, and then from system, if you have a NVIDIA or like an AMD or something, like, well, I'm not sure if AMD could do it. If you have a, like a custom graphics card or whatever, make sure you swing by this area and see if you can enable CUDA cores, and uh, that way so your GPU will be doing the rendering if you ever need to actually render any videos or anything inside Blender. So, there's that. I believe that's everything in here. You can also enable uh, different themes if you're wondering about why my blender looks different. Then you know, I, I just enable a different theme here. So science lab. There you go. So once you're done here, uh, save your user settings. All right. Now, um, let's see. Next. All right. Next, go to scene on over this tab right here. Uh, mine's a little bit smaller. Let me zoom it out here. And under scene, go to units. And then I click on metric degrees and set it to 0 0.01 down here. You can see I use Blender uh, to make all my assets, my characters, and other props and sort of thing. Uh, and I import into Unreal Engine 4. And the scale is a little bit different. So inside of Blender, you have to set it to 0 0.01. That way, so it'll be the accurate scale. So if you have a, a human that's 5 foot 8 inside of Blender, when you have a scale set to the 0 0.01, then um, it'll be uh, it'll be five foot eight inside the engine. That way, so it, you know it matches up, and you don't have to do any extra scaling or anything like that. It's just inconvenient. So let me put this in full screen. All right, so there's that. I believe that's all you would need for the tutorial. Not tutorial. It's not even done yet. That's I believe that's all you would need for the setup there. Oh. One more thing, this is just for new people. I'm not finna mess with this today, but just for reference. If you go on over to if I can find it, I lose every time performance. No. Shading no. Alright, um I was looking for um something to set the frame rate and whatever, uh inside of Blender whenever you are animating. But whenever I actually do an animation workflow video, then I'll actually show you where that is, because as of right now I don't remember. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, today I'm making a couch. So to start off, uh, if you press T, if you don't if you don't see this menu, press T, and it'll bring it up. And then uh, I'm just gonna select a cube just to start off a starting mesh. And then from here, now I'm not too sure how actually how big this is. It doesn't really matter. I got to compare it next to a character, but that's just simple scaling I can do. So you know, I'll let you do that on your own time. So first on a number pad, press. Uh, Press one and press five, both on the arm pad. That way, so you can um uh, get into orthographic view, so you can see how, so you can see uh, it from a flat perspective. 
Now I'm actually going to raise this mesh up to this red uh, line, the X value line. That way so it'll be flat on the floor. So first I'm going to edit mode, right? So don't do this in obvious mode because uh, um, that will change some uh, values around. I'll just explain it later. But you don't want to move around object mode usually. You would want to go into edit mode and move the object around. So I'm holding a uh, tab using the pie menu and I'm going to uh, edit mode. I'm just going to let go of that. I clicked it, but you don't need to click it. So press A to control uh, to hold hold it. <sighs> press A to select all the different faces and vertices on the mesh, and then just oh wait, let me get rid of that. That's something else. And then um, uh, press G, then press Z. That way, so you're sliding above the X axis. I mean, the Z axis. You're going up the Z axis. Z. Yeah. Cause uh, I believe I remember. Yeah. So if you hold G, that's basically your grab and move tool. So if you press if you press Z after you press G, you go up and down. Then you press X. Then it'll be along the X axis. Then you press Y. You can't see it now, but it'll be along the Y axis. So all the different axes. And you can see here which axis you may need to rotate here in this little snippet. So I'm gonna zoom in really close. It's probably an easier way of doing this, but I just do it this quick. I'm so used to doing it like that. Wait, there we go. So. Make sure you just flush against the ground here. You really don't even need to do this until you're done, but I just do this at the beginning. Again, this is not a tutorial video, this is a workflow video to show how I do things. That way, so you might learn a new way of doing something, or you might get some new ideas, or you might even see a feature in Blender you've never seen. So, there's that. So, you know, I press F5 to get out of the orth I mean, I press F on the number pad to get out of the orthographic view. And now, I'm still in edit mode, right? Yeah. Now I'm click down here for face. And then from face, uh, the face select tool. I'm just gonna drag this down just a little bit. All right. And I'm going to make a couch in the shape of a... I'm gonna do uh, like a couch that's in the shape of a U, so... I'm gonna take this, uh, I press A twice to select all of it. And then uh, drag it over. See, when you just highlight that, of course, you know all the faces are selected. So I'm dragging it back just a uh, just a little bit, not too much. Brand that doesn't matter either. And then I'm gonna select this face. Left click, select this face, and then I'm gonna hold Shift and select this face. Cause see, if you just press Shift and Shift, just like how Windows normally works, you know, you're just gonna select that one individual. But if you select this, and then hold Shift and then select this face. And then you know you select both of them. Now another tool, uh, you can press E to extrude. That's your extrude tool. So you press E, and then press right click to cancel that. You know it's still extruded. Is uh when you cancel it, it's just back into the uh, same place. Now I do that sometimes that way. So you can just do that. And you can press S. That's a scale tool. So E to extrude, S to scale, and then see you just pull it around the uh, scale it. And then. Those same access tools uh, work here, so while you're holding it down, press X, and then see, it gets dragged along the X axis. I'm gonna do that, make rough estimates of how wide it actually is. Let's see. Uh, right there, let's make kind of a large couch. Yeah, so it's like that. Then I'm holding S, and then X to scale slightly a little bit more. Then I'm select this face, and then this face. And then I'm just going to. Make sure I get this right. Make sure I'm just going. To, I'm just going to drag out. And I would do just like I'm a here. I'm gonna do it like this. Obviously, you can see how to use those loop tools. Okay, so there's that. Now, to get these these faces right here around this area, just like uh, these faces, I'm going to uh, hold Control and press R, and then just hover over the mesh, and then you see it's going to cut a um, a loop into into the mesh, just like those ones up there. And so I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel that way, so you can get more, <clears throat> get more uh, loops in there. That was have enough geometry to work with. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. So hold Control uh, and R, and then what was it? I did this so soon I don't even remember. Oh yeah, press Control and R, and then uh, click the face. And then once you click it, uh, press right click. Once you click it, it's just like this. So you click it, then press right click, and then. That way, so it snaps down the middle. But don't have to do that middle one, though. I just wanted to show you that. Okay. 
Now, so you have um, these faces here to work with, and now let's see what's the next step. Mm. All right, yeah. So the next step is to uh, the same loop tool. I'm going to loop, put a loop on the bottom portion. So you click this, but in this case you have to slide it down just slightly. And I may or not actually use this. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Might make it a fancy little shape or something. All right. So there. Once you add that, I'm going to uh, select all the top faces here. There's most of ways of doing it. You can subdivide here, or whatever. I press the W key by the way, but I'm not going to do that. Press I, and that's that inset tool I was talking about earlier. I'm going to use the inset tool to make the back playing of the uh, the couch. So there's that. I have uh, this little end shape. Now you can kind of see what I'm what I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna, uh, bring up the back in a minute. Trying to make sure. Here, I'm gonna do the inset again, but I'm going to make it a little bit tighter. Have a little more room to work with. <laughs> Alright. So there's that. And uh now I guess I can screw extrude. I was gonna do a more of a sci-fi couch, but I'm gonna start doing sci-fi meshes a little bit in the future. I just kinda wanna do like a so, what well, might be a little side? I don't know. I tend to improvise on this sort of thing. I didn't really know what I was going to make until, uh, well, a few minutes ago. So, I'm just going to take this part out right here. So, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to make sure I don't want to. That's fine, I can suggest it, no big deal. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do it like this. So, I have all those selected, but I'm going to hold shift again and deselect this by clicking it again. So, you can. You just select it, and you can also deselect it, you know, just like manual or everything. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do it like that. Just kind of put some variation on the couch. And then set it up like that. Alright, so there's that. Now I'm going to make it a little bit easier to look at. I'm gonna go over here to. So if you were probably somewhere over in these tabs on here, slide on over to this little uh, wrench tab right here and click on it. This is the modifiers tab. And of course, you know, you can apply different things to enhance your mesh. And so, half of these I don't even use, but the main ones I use is like solidify, subdivision, surface, and mirror. But for right now, I'm just going to use subdivision surface. And what that does, oh god. <laughs> and what that does is basically takes the jumps you have and it runs an, an algorithm that will basically give it more detail, per se. So, you can change how much detail it has. I'm going to go on over to this little section here to where you can add what the modifier is doing. Keep it all on this little area except for view. Set view. Click on this little small arrow here and set that to 2. You could use a little bit more view, uh, um, detail. Could think of the word. And click this adjust edge cage to modify results. That way so you can see specifically what it's doing. Oh, I see what I'm going to do now. There we go. So that way so you can see specifically what you're doing. Now, I'm going to uh, highlight everything. Again, press A or press it twice depending on what you did. Now I'm press W, that specials menu that I brought up a while back. Uh, inside here you have things like loop tools and I totally named that thing. Okay, so that those tools I was using here, that little purple tool here, that's a loop cut tool I meant, my bad. And in here, in the special menu, it's a loop tools and now uh, I'm not going to use any of those right now. Just for convenience. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no. Go over here to Shade Smooth. Because, um, well, as you can see here, see how, like, it smooths itself out? If I highlight it all again, go into the special menu and go to Shade Flat, that's what gives that shape where you can actually see the faces based off the, um, the lighting. But that's really strange for a couch, actually. So I'm going to Shade Smooth. And see, so there you have, you have a smooth cast. Oh, shit. Uh, ignore it. Or you don't see that. And there. I'm not done just yet. I'm actually going to clean this up a bit. <laughs> it looks like a bathtub almost. Anyway, so here's this couch going on. I'm going to. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to do. Just remembered. That loop cut I made over here. This little bottom right here. Uh, you could take that one actually and just slightly uh, grab that little widget and slightly drag it down Because whenever you add a loop cut 
and then you click it and I mean and you uh you uh before you let go of it you um slide up a bit it slides along the mesh right and when it does that it can help create a hard surface or a soft surface so get rid of that one and so now you have a hard surface on the ground you know a couch the bottom of the couch is going to be kind of flat and kind of, it's not going to be rounded off that hard that's kind of weird so that's how that tends to work and now I'm going to go over to this little middle section here and I'm uh, put loops on both of these on the left side here then one on the right side and click it once you get all the way to the right all right now I'm looking at this couch, the back of the couch, and I'm thinking maybe I need to. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. So what's a fun way to? I'm just gonna slip. Oh yeah, press C, and that's your. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like you know, a little highlighter slate you could use. Basically, once you press C, you can uh, scroll your mouse with a um, as your selector radius, and it's gonna select all of these areas here, and then here. This little back. I'm just gonna grab all the back of the couch and make it a little bit wider. So back here. There we go. And now press S. Let's see. How do I want to do this? Say multiple ways. Of... Oh, okay, I could do it like that. All right. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here. All right. So um, it sounds. I keep cutting myself off, but whatever. Now. Along with using means like W, E, and uh, the other one, you can also hold Alt, and that does a different function. Like you know, of course, alternate function. So I'm gonna press, I'm gonna hold Alt, and then press S, and then slightly drag it out. It's it's like more of like a thickness kind of scaling rather than a uh, just a size scaling by itself. So I have that. Press A to deselect it. Now I'm gonna press Control R. And then I'm going to make this top part of this couch a little bit. Well, let's see here. Ah, uh, you know what? Do the bottom first. I'm gonna do the bottom first. So down there is the bottom. That way, so I'm not use that at all. So it's starting to look more like a couch. Now back to edit mode. Uh, you already need to do that. I'm gonna select this top part of the couch. And uh, let's see. Basically, I'm going off the top of my head. I'm not. I don't have anything planned here. I'm just kind of free falling, which is what I usually do. I'm gonna drag this up just a little bit. All right, and then let's see what this looks like. Oh shit. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right there. Control Control Z undoes. But basically, what that was is like if you were to uh, press the it has on the selected, and you press E. And you just right click, you just let go of it. Then that it stays flat on the surface, and that helps you in that way to create a sharp edge. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm not doing that either. I'll keep that soft. It's it's pretty clear. I don't know what a couch actually looks like. All right, I'll do that. That's, that's nice. I'll show you what I did. I just selected these two faces right here and right here, and I press uh, that method I told you. Um, Extrude, but then right click. Then you have a uh, little round area there. And I'm gonna go on in here and in here and do the same thing there. So it has like this kind of round off effect. All right. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, add a little bit of detail to it. So to do that, I'm going to. Remember what I did last time? Cause I don't remember. I, I made a couch before, and uh, don't remember what I did. Oh, okay, right. I think it was this. So, well, let me make sure. I hate to, yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. That was it. This is a new little mess I figured out like the other day. Okay, so I'm kind of speed this up so I can wrap it up. It's my bad bandwidth. It takes forever to record new uh, new videos. But click on this, this, and this, right? We're going to do this all the way around. And basically, uh, let go of it. Don't do it, just let go of it. Skip this area and do the same for this side, right? So, like that, right here. And it's going to do it all the way across, like there. Like that. And you see they're like line up with each other, just like that. There. I apologize for the uh, 
the loud clicking noises. I need to find a way to get rid of that. My audio denoiser has been uh, kind of glitched up lately. I have no idea. Like some of the FL Studio 12, I think. It's been kind of effing funny. And then maybe if I might, might try FL Studio 11, it might, um, it might actually uh, fix itself. I don't know. I'll have to re download though. I have to uh, redownload it. I've uninstalled this since because I don't need it. Well, technically I do now. I'm basically just dragging these couches out, by the way. And make sure they're, um... Uh, I'm about to adjust that a little bit, it's a little funny. It's a little different, because last time I did it for like an L-shaped couch, and it worked a little bit better, but... Uh, this should be fine, though. This, so, yeah, and I'm grabbing these little... The face I made, the extruded faces, um... Uh, I'm basically just grabbing those and just pulling those out slightly. And get like that little detail on the couch. Now it's a little bit funny here. So, oh you know what? I'm gonna uh, do the same thing here and the same thing here. I wasn't gonna do that first but it, I think it'll look a little bit better. Now I'm gonna show you a little shortcut. Now that you got opposite sides uh, uh, connected, I mean grab, you can actually just press scale with the S and then press X and just slightly pull them in a little bit if you want to do two at a time. It's a rough estimate here. There, so see, that's how that works. And you can see I have. A, oh, you know what? One more detail, one more detail. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about, too. No, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm basically going to add that little back impression that a couch makes. Well, you know, like how like sometimes some couches have like that back little ridge there. I'm going to create that ridge real fast. So, press C. And just grab all these faces here. And just grab on the other side too. You want to make it mirrored. Technically, I could use a mirror modifier that's inside of there, but sometimes I just do it like raw. That way, so if I want to did want to make some kind of variation on one side, yeah, I could do that. I may just use the mirror modifier for characters, honestly. So grab this, pull it back slightly, only a little bit. You just want the shadow to kind of come out. And then I'm uh, press S and then X, do that same trick, try to scale it out again slightly, just barely do it. You want it to be subtle about it. Then go to object mode. And there we have it, a couch. Now you may be thinking, uh, this is kind of a strange looking couch. Uh, my game is actually sci-fi. I'm going to adjust this real quick. My game is actually sci-fi, so... Uh, do that right there. So, with it being sci-fi... I'm not really too much worried about how believable it is, as far as, you know, so, and that's going to be a lot of, uh, my tutorial going to be mostly abstract objects like that, like, if I'm, if I'm making a robot, it's not going to be a robot, it's most likely not going to be a robot that's, like, realistic, like, something you would see in 2015, it's going to be a robot that's, like, you know, that would be, have some kind of fancy influence, by the way, uh, try to get rid of these little areas right here if you can, um, see if I can do that, but yeah, so that's that sort of thing, and what I did here, Special menu, I'm grabbing the edge because I'm remembering this uh, versus select, edge select, face select. So go to edge select, click on this weird edge right here. It seems like it's like in like a native space. Press W and then go to smooth. And that does what it says, it does. It smooths the tool out. And I'm doing it for this side too. Now it's not perfect. I actually need to uh, go back around and like pull that around. But for right now, it's fine. I might do it off camera or something like that. One more detail because I keep adding stuff. I'm going to select these faces here. Press E. Now I'm gonna um, see what I can do here. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So I press E extrude, but I right click that way so it didn't go anywhere. Now I'm scaled in a little bit. Go over here. Arbitrarily scaled in. This, this is probably where you would want to use a mirror modifier, but I'm not going to do that though. It's fine. Now I'm just going to pull them back in. No, I'm not. I'm going to scale it. I mean, I'm gonna, uh, not scaled. I'm gonna press E to um, extrude once more. Then this time you extrude in, just pull it in slightly. That way, so it's that little bit of detail. I'm gonna do it here so you can see what I did since I did that kind of clumsily. So press E extrude, and then scale them in a little bit. Oh, you know what? Select both of them. Press S and then press Z. That way, so you can do it like that this time. Then press S and then press Y. You can scale it like this. And I'm not sure if that's a circle or not, so press W, and then press circle, I mean, <laughs> loop tools, then 
click circle. There. That way, so it's, you know it's a circle. Then from there, extrude one more time, let go of it, press S, then press X, and zoom it back outward. There you go. So it's kind of like a pseudo mirror tool. See, that works every now and then, but every now and then you might be at a certain axis angle you're operating at where you can't just do that, but most of the time you can, but I just forget. So there's that. And uh, you can also do that for it in these areas too. So you can go in here, circle, and here, W. Click on circle. Make sure those are circle. I think they are circles. So. And so this view is getting a little bit long, considering that uh, my bandwidth, I can't upload very large videos. I've mainly been uploading videos at my college I go to. I've just been still in their Wi Fi. And um, I've just been um, uploading from their computers. But since I'm somewhat out for right now, until summer school at least, I don't have access to their computers. So I'm about to rely on my internet for a while. So anyway, um, here's this couch here. Um, I may in the future start like uh, open up. I might open up a Google Drive that way so you can download the results later. That we just have something to kind of mess around with or whatever. But that'll be in the future though. So um, here's a couch, and I will see you next time. Please remember to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe for future content on our channel. Thanks for watching.